Hey, I wanted to do a quick intro. Well, you know, my definition of quick. But a quick intro to this new series that I was going to start that was going to be different than my Let's Play stuff. I still plan on doing my Let's Play stuff, probably uploading just as frequently as I have been. Um, you know, I don't know if that'll continue after Arena as frequently or whatever, but I still plan on doing it. But this one, I planned on doing something that'll probably be much less interesting to the people in general. I feel like it's important to me to do it for myself, because with modding, it's, it's not always easy to get the motivation to work on something, or to... Instead, you could do something else, or just BS or whatever, procrastinate, whatever you want to say, and then you just go and do that, and then you never get anything done. But I would look at, as I've been doing with these Let's Plays in the same way, is that, or recording something, recording a video about it, I found makes it easier to motivate myself in a way, as like almost a, a routine you know, you get up in the morning, you do your daily routine, you just do it. You don't really think about it. You get so used to doing it. And I feel like this would be the a good way to do that in the same sense, is that, you know, I'm going to record a video and then I'm going to upload it for this series or whatever thing, but I'll also be getting something done at the same time. At least that's the idea. As well as probably shutting off other things while I'm doing these recordings, just like I do with the, the Let's Play. So that'll be, make it easier for me to not distract myself during that session at the very least. If, you know, I might go even farther afterwards if I still have the momentum, but at the very least during that session, I will have hopefully less distractions and be able to get more progress and motivate myself that way. And people do this sort of in a similar way with say, dieting goals or something like, something of that sort. Just having the idea of somebody else watching or whatever you want to, anything like that, it's almost an uh, accountability thing. Somebody would have a, a partner or something like that, a uh, friend or whatever thing, they would have somebody else that would basically be there to be their, their responsibility or their accountability partner for whatever thing they're trying to do, staying sober, staying, you know, dieting, that, that kind of thing. And I would look at this in the same way, is that this is my accountability thing to myself. Having these recordings and doing this thing would keep me motivated, keep me wanting to um, continue doing this and focus on it or whatever, actually get something done during whatever session. That's the, that's the hope, at least. As well as some of the secondary goals that are less important to me. Like, this, is not what the, this is not entirely what the purpose is of the thing, but secondary things like Potentially helping other people um, understand modding, making mods, coding, at least in like C Sharp and maybe um, JSON or whatever. You know, that would be like secondary goals, but I would think that at least somebody would f hopefully find it useful or I could like link to it and say like, well, you know, look look how it, the workflow works and that kind of thing. But yeah, sort of just like a pretty long form dev vlog sort of thing. I, I, I likely won't do any crazy amounts of editing for the actual videos because personally, I just find editing videos annoying. Like it just takes a lot of time and usually more effort than I feel it's worth to do like crazy amounts of editing. It, it really depends. Like I'll probably like I'm, I'm usually fine with just clipping or cutting out certain parts that I feel like are completely unnecessary, like just completely dead space or whatever, like nothing going on. But outside of that, usually I'm not going to be doing like crazy like stuff because that's just not how I do. That's just not how I, I like to do editing. It's not, I don't find much uh, satisfaction and accomplishment in um, video editing. It's just kind of like a means to an end. Like most people probably aren't going to actually enjoy this series or care about it because... You know, most people don't really care about the actual inner workings of how something is made, like a program or whatever, that, that kind of quote-unquote boring work that is involved with it. They just want the end result, which I completely understand. I, I mod for an end result. I don't really... I enjoy sometimes the puzzle-solving aspect of modding and coding and stuff, but for the most part, I'm there for the end result of it. But yeah, I'm going to start this series. Uh, I'm probably going to do multiple different mods, maybe not... All at once, I hope to, you know, I'm, I'm a person and I don't like to multitask too much because I like to stay focused on one thing and then get it finished. Hopefully, that's that's the idea at least. I, I try not to jump between too many projects and then leave too many things unfinished. And I think first for this one that I'm going to start something that would be a good way to get back into it. Something that is not 
too trivial, but it is something that I also generally understand what I would need to do and what I would plan to do from the onset instead of hopefully not being caught with too many confusing roadblocks along the way. And that would be a mod I'm going to call... <laughs> I'm not very I'm not very creative with names, but I'm very, uh, I think, good at making names that describe something accurately. So this one would be Locked Loot Containers. Oh yeah, and this would be for a mod for Daggerfall Unity, as that that is the primary game that I do mod currently, and I plan on modding in the future currently at least. And essentially what it would do is it kind of inspired me, as I already had this, this idea, but it inspired me more after playing Arena. And in the dungeons, at least, I think, I don't know if every dungeon, I think it might just be the story dungeons. They have um, specific fairly good loot pile, you know, relatively good loot piles, but they are in a chest and you have to unlock them. You can either bash them open. I don't know if there's any downside to that besides damaging your weapon. But you can bash them open, just like a door. You can unlock them, and you might be able to use an open spell on them. I have no idea how that really works, like, interaction-wise. I would hope it does. They don't have traps. There's not, like, this is, this is, there's no trapped chest, as far as I know, like, in Morrowind. But I'd like to have kind of both ideas from that. And it seems like it's such a basic thing to have chest in, like, a game that has dungeon crawling and stuff. But for some reason, Daggerfall, they never implemented that kind of thing. Like, they have the concept of it, but they never really ever realized it. So, yeah, there's no there's no loot chest, which I always found kind of disappointing. And it reduces the utility and use even more so already than of the lockpicking skill. That would be the idea, is essentially to replace... Uh, well, this would be the initial way I would imagine I'm going to implement it is... Whenever you go into a dungeon, it'll pick some loot piles from whatever, completely random. Maybe there'll be something that determines which ones to pick. I don't know right now, but essentially it would take some of those when you first go into a dungeon or maybe even an interior, but mostly a dungeon probably, and replace those with a custom chest thing that I would be adding in. Probably either, a, I don't know, maybe a 3D model. Maybe it'll just be a billboard like the rest. I don't know, whichever works. And then maybe you can activate it. Maybe later on I'll be able to get it more detailed so you can actually, like, hit it. But probably I'll just bring up a text prompt that would say, like, do you want to bash it? Do you want to try to lockpick it? Do you want to try to use an open spell and then it'll use mana or uh, I don't know. And then hopefully it'll work similar to how you'd imagine, maybe with better loot. And if you try to bash it, maybe it'll destroy some of the loot so there's some kind of downside to that. Hopefully I can make them... Uh, well, I could make them, but hopefully I can make it interesting enough so they can have stuff like traps, uh, similar to Morrowind, so you'd actually want to disarm them, and if you didn't, you might actually, you know, get screwed up, get disease, get poisoned, get killed, I don't know, summon something. Interesting stuff, I would hope. Make it more, make the dungeon delving even more enjoyable than it already is, and hopefully more intriguing each time you go in. And give Thief characters more of a reason to exist. Uh, but yeah, that's, this is the, that's the first one I plan on doing. I'm going to do each one in a kind of like series where it'll be like, I'm working on this mod today or whatever. I don't know. I'm working on this mod. It'll be like the mod name and then whatever part, similar to how, how I do my let's play, but whatever part. And then I'll probably upload whatever. I don't know. Just maybe once a day, maybe twice a day, maybe less than that. But it'll be alongside the let's play. So hopefully those don't get interrupted, I guess. But this will hopefully be my way to keep myself accountable, motivate myself, and also maybe help others being able to show people how to do this stuff. Hopefully. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a great example because I'm not the best at coding. I'm definitely not. But I know a few things at least. I've made a few mods already. I've released a few mods. So I at least have some ability in doing it. But anyway, that is the intro to this series I'm going to start doing. And... Hopefully you enjoy. Either way, I'm doing it for myself, and if anybody benefits, that's great. But thanks for listening, and I will see you as the series continues. Welcome to the first part of this new series. The intro I recorded like two or three days ago, but as you can see probably from the clock at the bottom right there, I'm recording this pretty late. For like two or three days after making that intro, I've been like procrastinating actually starting this and making the uh, first video about it or whatever actually starting. I don't know why.
just goes to show why this is important to me that uh, I have something that tries to give me a routine to stick with and keeps me hopefully accountable to actually do this stuff instead of procrastinate indefinitely and uh, push it back and such. Anyway, besides all that, I'm not going to be showing like the very beginning of how to set up this stuff. I'm kind of just going by because it's just annoying to do that. Not that it's annoying to set up per se, but it's annoying to have it set up already and then breaking that all down and then setting it up again. I don't know. I mean, eventually I have to do it at some point, but for this one, I'm just going to kind of go, go with it, go with the flow. And that'll probably be the general vibe of most of these, honestly, because it was hard enough trying to start this. And then I can't even imagine making it more difficult each time with like thinking about what things I have to do first and all that stuff. It would, it would become even more difficult. So I'm like, you know what? Just go with it. <laughs> Hopefully the audio doesn't suck that much and any other things. Maybe later on, I'll add some other stuff like maybe music in the background. Right now, I'm not listening to any music. Just trying to 100% focus on doing this. But later, I'll probably add stuff in the background just so the viewer doesn't get completely bored. Then again, this is mostly for me, so I shouldn't worry too much about that whole case, that whole factor. But yeah, so I currently have Visual Studio open. This is Visual Studio 2019, I believe. Doesn't matter what version, I just used 19 because it that was the one that I kind of had installed and worked out for me. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to stick with it. And obviously you don't need Visual, Visual Studio or any IDE really to do modding. It's just Visual Studio is very powerful. Um, it works natively and very easily or whatever well with C Sharp, which Daggerfall Unity mods are built in. And Visual Studio just works very well with that. It's designed for it, I guess. And right now, I don't have the Unity editor open because I, frankly, I don't need it open right now because, yeah, and uh, apologies for anyone. I know, I know it's, people would say that it's like you're a psychopath if you use uh, day mode or whatever it's called, uh, not, not night mode. I don't know, man. Whenever I do night mode, I have a harder time distinguishing between the different font colors and stuff that indicate certain things in the Visual Studio. And I'm just like, I don't know. I like day mode better for uh, programming and text documents and stuff myself, even though I know night mode is generally the preferred for a lot of people. Hopefully, if you're even watching this with your eyes, I didn't blind you uh, or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, this is the very beginning, but the main script that I will be using for this mod as well as for most mods. This is basically like a template that I basically just copy and paste from all my, my other mods to start a new mod, a new main mod script or whatever, just to make it easier on myself, you know, copy and paste. That's what most people do end of the day whether they like to admit it or not. I stripped down. Usually there was even a little bit more here, like stuff for settings and stuff that was already in. I decided I was like, all right, if I'm going to start from scratch here with this one mod, I might as well make it simpler for myself and others by just stripping down like to basically bare minimum. Like there, this is even probably more than, than the bare minimum that's needed, I'm sure. I guarantee it is. This for me is like the bare minimum that I understand that works and I could use for other things. And even this top section here is completely unnecessary. I've seen people like uh, the many DFU uh, scripts themselves and the base code uh, have these kind of like headers, if you want to go by that or whatever, where it's just like, all right, you know, this information, uh, who the original author is, what date it was created, what date it was edited, the version it was edited, all this crap, special thanks, blah, blah, blah. Stuff that I just keep there for basically every mod I make, just for the hell of it. And it's, I think it's helpful to have sometimes up here. I forget what you call these, the uh, inherited, not really inherited, but the the things that are being used by this, this particular script and everything up here. These are just the ones that were not marked as unnecessary for these uh, current bare, bare bone stuff that is down here. There's going to be a lot more eventually as we go on, that's going to be added up here just because it makes it easier, cleaner later on for the other parts of the code. But right now it's just like these three things, basically the actual script name. I just basically, I'm very uncreative, but it makes it easier for me. I guess I just have it as the full name of the mod essentially, which in this case that I'm going to be first working on is locked loot containers. After that, just have main just to, cause if you just do locked loot containers, 
then sometimes it'll get confusing if your namespace is also the just say the mod name so putting something afterwards that for the main script i think is very helpful i found so locked loot containers main is this one script the namespace that it it encapsulates i guess you could say is just the name of the mod locked loot containers and that namespace will be basically used for any other scripts that are in this mod essentially to i don't even know if it's necessary i'm not very good with the the code part of that or like understanding how that all works with the namespaces and such but generally i've had better luck having my scripts communicate and linked in with each other uh hooked in with each other easier if they all share the same namespace i guess like the it, it shares permissions in that way i don't know it, it's it's kind of weird but yeah that's what I do. I have the namespace for every script within this mod, essentially, where it's possible, be that namespace. In this case, locked loot containers. And then after that, I'm just going to be going through, like, this is the bare bones, and I'm not even going to be able to explain what so much of this, some of these things do, but just the fact that this is what I use, this is what I've used, this is what I've learned to use for each one of my mods, the bare basic minimum parts of it to make it work and hook in with the whole DFU's modding system api or whatever so the class for this main mod is i just call it even though you could change you know there's going to be many classes that you use depending on how uh you you like to organize your code and such but in this case i just have the public class and then the name of that of the name of what the script is actually called so in this case locked loot containers main it doesn't have to be the name of the file at all like the file and the class can be completely different things i just like to do that because it helps me keep it organized in my mind the main file as far as i know always has to have this part which is basically saying for the part of this that hooks into unity that this is a uh, mono behavior which means it can use uh, it inherits the mono behavior which means it can use various methods and functions, I guess you could say, that the uh, Unity would only allow it to be used, like, in this in this sense. One of the examples being um, Start. Uh, another big example being Update, which basically just has something run every frame that the uh, game in question is runs or whatever, every single frame. That gets used fairly often for various things. Start gets used at almost, not always... Sometimes it's another one, like, I forget what the other one is called, but I don't use that anymore because I've had problems with it. So I just stick with start, essentially, because uh, I understand it and it's always worked for me. But uh, yeah, start is one of these. Basically, when the mod is getting initialized, after you press play, this is the stuff that runs and initializes whatever stuff that you specify in this start function that is a part of Unity's mono behavior. So this is very important. Mono behavior, inheriting, or whatever you want to say, inheriting from mono behavior. This is required. Uh, as far as I know, this is required for the main file, essentially. The main file in your mod where you do all of this initialization stuff. The hooking into the modding system, basically. This one I can't explain that much better. I'm not great with all these things, but this is just what I start with. Uh, and it's, it's, hasn't failed me yet so far, at least. So I do, uh, static and then the, the name of the class that we are currently, which is locked loot containers main, then instance, and then, um, semicolon to end that line. And then that basically like initializes this parameter variable of instance. And then after that, immediately public static get set, or in this case, just a get method, which we then call instance with a capital I, which is like kind of a, um, what would you call this? I guess this would be like almost an API thing. So other things can use it if they wanted to. Essentially, that's that's what it's for. And then this is all kind of confusing. These question marks, I forget exactly what these are, but I know that sometimes these are used as a uh, shorthand for like a logical operation. This basically kind of being like an if statement, but I'm, I kind of forget what the two question marks if those are the same. Don't worry too much, basically, what this is. But what it's doing is getting an instance version of your class, and in this case being the loot containers main, and then finding it within the scene, and then returning that value to whatever called this instance uh, method. 
which then gets basically used somewhere else or if it's needed just it, it's don't worry too much about it but it's important to have it because the modding system needs to know what object it basically needs to call back to or whatever what needs to know what it is and this is essentially what it's doing similar thing right under that static mod which is a type that is which is a type specific to the mod support api i'm pretty sure it just basically means what this is that we just uh have as an object essentially like it has the different characteristics of a mod such as probably its id number maybe where it came from uh, a few other things important to it which this will then be called later on and referenced to uh, to basically communicate with that api so it knows what to do with it essentially what to do with it and how to organize it and deal with it in other cases possibly even communicating between mods if you do that messaging and such now this part is probably is i would say probably the most essential part of the entire equation here for this uh these few lines here not saying all of them are but this is essentially like the as far as i know the the first most bare bone things that you need to communicate with the daggerfall unity modding api through a script and tell it that this is a mod that we will use upon initializing the game on, on prop upon pressing play possibly even earlier than that in the um actual like mod settings and stuff possibly i, I can't tell you what basically most of this crap does just it kind of needs to be like this invoke i don't have any clue <laughs> uh state manager is something in daggerfall unity so basically to know when these things are uh there it yeah i don't know what most of this crap does not gonna lie uh in it this i'm not sure either in the params and all that basically initialization params i guess and then under that you have mod in a params which we just have here and then so mod then gets defined here mod equals in a params dot mod which this is calling when the modding api initializes kind of and then it's giving it this value which is this mods value basically and saying hey this is what that mod object is and then right after that this one there's other ways to do this obviously this is just the way that i've had saved and as a template for a while and it hasn't failed me yet so yeah very bare bones but it works and then this is actually defining what instance is from up there so instance equals new game object so we're defining a new game object in this case but basically just setting it immediately to that and then looking up the name of the mod which in my case is locked loot containers uh the actual like string that it will be named which i believe would actually be what it, you have it named from the mod builder so this might be completely different for whatever you decide to name your mod or whatever however conventions you would decide to name it as this is just mine but that's the string that it's looking for and then it adds the component which is our main class here uh, to the actual scene the unity scene and then it allows it to use its various things such as mono behavior update start all that stuff without this your mod will not work because it will not be found it will not be initialized essentially or it won't just it just won't exist within the unity scene unless this is defined and as far as i know I'm sure I'll be getting into this way later on other mods that are more complicated or of different kind of things, but any other mono behavior inherited script within your um, mod or whatever you want to say within your files, it needs to be added here in a similar way. Maybe not exactly the same way, but basically the anything that has mono behavior needs to be added here otherwise they won't work so like if you have another script that is say like a custom custom ai thing that you're adding custom a custom component that you're adding to enemies that would change their ai behavior or something just then as an example or to anything loot piles whatever you're attaching it to something else and you have that and you need the model behavior to say use uh update in it which is not a, an uncommon thing you would need to also add that component to the unity scene in some way now maybe you could do that somewhere else but that's how i've done it at least i'm 
100% certain you could do it in so many other ways, but this is just the way that I've done it before, where in this init and invoke part, this necessary part for the main mod, whatever, the main mod script, you add them to the scene from here. If you, that that's just how I've done it. You add the component that has the model behavior. If it doesn't have model behavior, uh, maybe some other things need it. But as far as I know, only, as far as I know, model behavior is the one that you definitely need to add to the scene beforehand in some way. Then add that ramble out of the way. That probably made no sense. Um, and then after that, do mod. Now that is defined, mod dot a, as a parameter of mod is ready and you set it to true or you know you can set it to whatever <laughs> if, if it's not ready you can you can make it false but in this case we make it true so the modding api and the modding system knows what state it currently is in and what to do with it and such but that was the biggest biggest part kind of i i tried to explain it in a very bad way probably but hopefully that makes some sense and there's going to be so many other things that get added here later on. This is just, like I said, very bare bones. Very, very bare bones. This is like the most bare bones that I can really think of that is somewhat going to be fairly easy to expand upon later, which we will. And then after that, the actual thing that will happen when the mod is initially uh, initialized or, yeah, initially initialized after you press play and the mod is active. Like if, you, if the mod is not active, set as active in the mod uh, settings then it won't initialize at all but if you have it uh, active in the mod settings then when you press play at the launcher screen then you'll see you would see in the debug stuff all these kind of things such as these uh, messages that people might put debug logs and such other things that happen but this is where all the other stuff that you define here at the start would happen which you could do a lot of things you could um subscribe to uh event handlers which is what i do often set up uh mod settings or uh get my grab mod settings that are there and then use those to set whatever we'll be doing this or whatever i'll be doing this we'll be doing this later with more details and stuff but this is this is a fairly uh accurate description do stuff this is this is what after this is what happens after start. These strings, debug strings, not necessary, but I like to have them because it's like, oh, okay, which which mod is where, which one was initializing where, what happened before and after. So begin mod in it, locked loop containers, whatever mod name is. Then in between that, I do the other stuff, and then when that's all done, finished mod in it. But yeah, that's the kind of like bare basics explanation for the first script. Probably overly complicated, but. I think that's a pretty detailed way to go into it instead of just being like, oh, this does a thing. Don't worry about it. At least I tried to explain what the hell it might actually do and mean and why it's there. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit late. I mostly wanted to just get this this one part recorded so I could edit it and stuff and then make it into a video. The first video in this series, at least. So I don't think I'm going to end a little bit late. So I don't think I'm going to continue and actually like do anything besides explain what I just did. Basically, that's all I wanted to accomplish with this first introduction video to this. And in the next ones, I'm going to actually be doing the progress and parts that are useful and making the mod work. That's what I hope happens. That's the uh, plan. Just as a uh, teaser, I guess you could say, or a uh, foreshadowing, that will be the next thing that will start essentially that I plan on starting in the neck in that next part would be getting rid of this do stuff line and then putting the event handlers which I will definitely be using for this particular mod such as on transition interior or on transition interior dungeon or some various other ones like uh, when loot is generated and a bunch of other things probably um overriding potentially some formulas here uh, as well as registering some custom activation objects that i won't do probably right away because i i've never done it yet so I, i'll have to figure out figure out how to do it for one which i'll potentially do on uh, the actual recording trying to figure it out but i also have to know what object i plan on using in this case which will likely be some kind of 3d chest model or maybe even a 2d billboard chest model i don't know i'll have to see how it goes but yeah i'm sure this wasn't interesting to anybody but maybe this will be useful to somebody besides just myself but either way 
It's important if it's useful to, to just me more than anything, so I'm glad about that. But if you did listen, I hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.